also called the Union Jack. <laughs> At least that's what we refer to it to here. So, <laughs> it is the British flag. So I don't think there's too much of a difference between um, the sports analogies that we use here in the United States and what they use in Britain, but I'm sure there's a few. Okay, so the first one. Hello, that class, is it? Um, hello, Zandra. This is sports, this is beginner idioms. Uh, and today we're just doing all sports idioms. Okay. Sorry, my writing. Okay. No problem. <laughs> all right, here we go. So the first one is a ballpark figure or a ballpark estimate. Um, this, so the, this comes from, this is a baseball analogy, or I'm sorry, a baseball expression. Um, and where we play baseball, we call the ballpark. Um, where we play baseball, we call the ballpark. And the ballpark is, it's fairly big, but um, I mean, it's, it is quite large, actually. So if you, if you ask someone, can you please tell me, you know, how much money you think I will make? And then they say, oh, I can't really tell you. I don't really know. Um, you know, I can't say anything. Um, then you can say, come on, come on, just give me a ballpark figure. Just give me a ballpark estimate. That means something relatively close, right? So relatively close. Something in the ballpark. That means, you know, at least it's in the park. It's it's not that far off, right? So we say, um, can't you at least give me a ballpark estimate of, you know, how much money we're making? So you might say something like this. Um, can't you at least give me a ballpark Uh, can you please uh, give us the link of the chat? Absolutely. Here's an example, and here's the link to the to the document. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So d does it make sense? A ballpark figure, or sometimes we say a ballpark estimate. I gave an example here. Can't you at least give me a ballpark estimate of the money we are making? You know, it means something close, right? A reasonably close estimate. Okay, next, across the board. Um, across the board means that something is true everywhere. So, and this comes from um, um, a board game board games like like checkers or chess uh, sorry I don't type very well checkers or or chess so it means that the rules like what whatever you're talking about is true for the entire game right so whatever rules there are they're true across the board they're true for everything so um, we might say something like um, taxes or our taxes are uh, taxes are something everyone has to pay across the board like this so you might say taxes are something everyone has to pay across the board it means no matter where you live in the world <laughs> everybody has to pay taxes right <laughs> except I guess there's one is it Monte Carlo I forget there's one country where they don't have taxes or something maybe but but basically um, everybody else has taxes <laughs> So we say across the board, right? Across the board. Okay, does that, do you need more examples? I, I can certainly give you more examples. Um, yes. Okay, some more examples. Let me give another one. Um, uh, somebody might say, um, like, let's, I'm just trying to think of an example of um, um, something that you might use, like, in your real life. So here's an example. We have A who might say, um, 
this let's see let's see um So you might say, the man I am dating is difficult, and I might say, yes, men are difficult across the board. <laughs> I might say, right? It means all men, <laughs> you might say, right? Or someone gave you the example, babies are cute across the board. Yes. That's true. There's no such thing as an ugly baby, right? I mean, every baby is cute. <laughs> that's just the way it is, right? So every baby is cute. So that's very good. So anything like that, you could like um, anything that's true across the board. So like whenever you want to make a generalization, uh, you can say across the board um, means it's true everywhere. Company decided to give the workers across the board an increase in salary. Very good. That works great. Alejandro, good job. Across the board is difficult. Yes, you could say, um, let me write this down, finish this thought. Across the board is, 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 is like a generalization. So let me see, Zandra, what you, what you have here. Okay. So like you could say, um, yeah, so you, uh, you definitely need like a noun, like you'll have to say like uh, math, here's, an, here's another example, math is difficult across the board, that means everywhere, right? You could say like this, right? Across the board is, is like all over the world, um, okay, uh, it, can, it can be all over the world, but it's, it's more of a generalization, so yes, it's true, it's true everywhere in any situation, so it's not so much necessarily the location, but every part of it is difficult. So um, across the board is like all over the world. I mean, in a way, you, you know, you can say that, um, but I think it's more of a generalization about um, every possible circumstance in which you find something. So like there are some people who will say that math is difficult across the board, and it doesn't matter whether you're studying math in the Congo or in Spain or in Paris, right? Um, it's difficult no matter where you are, right? So um, it's difficult not because of, the, of where you're studying it, but because of the, the way math is, right? It's just for many people it's very difficult. Okay. Do you have any other examples? You gave some good ones. The company decided to give the workers an across-the-board increase in their salary. Very good. Across-the-board movement. Yes, you could say that too. An across-the-board movement. Yes, it means everywhere, right? So, like right now, the movement is for like environmentally friendly, um, um, uh, environmentally friendly sort of energy, and that's an across-the-board thing. And yes, Mo, that's good, a general truth. Yes, that will work. Uh-huh, you can think of it that way. It's true everywhere. It's true across the board. It's true all the time in any circumstance. Very good. Okay, so ballpark figure, that comes from baseball across the board. That comes from, like, chess, right? The rules are the same no matter where you are on the board in chess. Okay, the next one is ahead of the game ahead of the game. This means that you have an advantage, right? You can think of it as this way, advantage. Um, so, um, so for example, let's say that you want to prepare for the TOEFL exam, let's say for example, and um, you know, you, you've been studying for, I mean, you start studying maybe six months before you take the test. Then I would say, I would say at that point, you're ahead of the game, right? Because most students don't really start to study for the test until maybe a month before they take the test. So if you begin studying six months before you take the test, you are ahead of the game. That means you have an advantage, right? You, you know, you, you have a head start. We say you, you are ahead of the other students who are also going to take the test. So we say you're ahead of the game. So I might, here's an example. Um, um, I might say something like this. Since he has been studying for five months, he is ahead of the game 
and will do better than his peers. Okay, so here's an example. Since he has been studying for five months, he's ahead of the game and will do better than his peers. What is a peer? What, what are peers? Mm -hmm. Oh, peers are uh, people your own age. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh. I'm sorry, peers, P-E-E-R-S, peers, peers, people your own age. So like, um, so like, for example, ahead of the game is difficult. Okay. Um, let me give another example. Um, let me think. Let me think. Um, uh, well, let's see. Um, her term. I her term paper uh, is not due for two weeks, but she is ahead of the game. Okay, here's an example. Okay. Uh, okay, does it work? Germans are ahead of the game in car design. Yes, you can say that, Mo. That works. Peers. Yes, peers are like a classmate. Back to no way. Good. It's English basic. Yes, well, this is beginner idioms, right? So, um, that's right. So, so Aristotle, just hang in there, okay? <laughs> we say, just keep listening. And, and you'll, you'll catch up. Okay. Are there questions on ahead of the game? No. Okay. Anyone? Okay. okay. Next. Another string to your bow. Um, um, it's an, another string to your bow is just a way of saying that you have an alternative, right? So this comes from, um, our, this expression, another string to your bow, comes from the sport of archery, right? Just so you know. So archery, you have, you have the bow and you have the arrows, right? So um, if you add another string to your bow, then it's just another way that you can shoot an arrow, right? So, um, to add an, um, another string to your bow, yes, I will speak more slowly. Another string to your bow um, means an alternative. Another way to do something. Okay, so for example, um, when she got another degree in math, she added another string to her bow. Now she can get almost any job she wants. Okay, so here is an example. When she got another degree in math, she added another string to her bow. Now she can get almost any job she wants. Let me give you another example. Um, I think you added an 
another string to your bow when you um, told him Um, okay, hold on, Alejandro. Let me let me finish this, and then I'll check yours. No, you do a better job. Okay, here's an, here's another example. Uh, we could like, I'm, I'm trying to give examples that you might actually hear or or use. So, you might hear somebody say, "I think you added another string to your bow when you told him you were not happy about this situation." Now he will give you a better job. So it means that you you know there's an alternative or you have more power. Um Mo is saying it sounds like an advantage rather than an alternative. Well, it's kind of both, Mo. Um if you have an alternative, that that is an advantage, right? Um you it, I mean if you have some choice, that's always an advantage, no matter what, right? I mean nobody likes to only have one way that they have to do something it's nice if you have a choice so um, you're right it's kind of both an advantage and also an alternative and then Alejandro says if you can teach French as well as soccer it's another string to your bow yeah okay yes we we would say it's another string on your bow Yes, that means that you have an alternative. That you, if you, if uh, if soccer, you can't find a job teaching soccer, then the alternative would be you could maybe find a job teaching French, right? And so to get back to Mo, if somebody teaches both French and soccer, they have an advantage over people who only can teach one thing, right? So if they can't find a job teaching soccer. They could go look for another job teaching French, whereas somebody else, if they can't find a job teaching soccer, they're that's it for them, right? They have to just like work at McDonald's or, <laughs> or you know, do something worse, <laughs> something bad. Okay, are there any other questions on this? Okay, I'm gonna move yeah, this. Okay. Behind the next the oh, question? Yes, behind the next board. Is it from snooker? Oh, teaching soccer in a French talking country. Um I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean you could do both, yes. That would be that's another way that you could make use of your skills if you teach soccer and French then yeah you could technically you could move to another country and teach soccer there <laughs> where they speak French yes you could do that <laughs> and that would be another string on your bow very good very good okay okay the next expression behind the eight ball this expression is from billiards or what we call here in America we call it pool right um, I, uh, I don't know if this is popular in your countries I, I'm sure it is <laughs> usually you find these in bars <laughs> um, a pool table sometimes we call them or a billiards table does everybody know what what these are Okay, Victor says it's popular there. Okay, pool. It's um. Let me find a picture just in case. Okay, let's see here. Images, pool table. Let's see if we can find some here. Pool table. <laughs> <coughs> 
Here's one. All right. You can click on this, and um, this will show you what we mean by pool. Okay, so yeah. Here, too, in, in the United States, we play pool mo mostly in bars, really. Mostly. Um, and Victor, I don't, nine ball, is it nine ball? I don't, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's, I think it's 12, but, you know, I don't really play, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but I put a picture here, um, so you can see, like, what we mean by pool. Okay, so, in, in pool, um, there's one, at least an American pool, I, you know, and I apologize because I don't really play, so I don't, I don't know this game that well, but um, there's something called the eight ball. There's one of the balls that is called the eight ball. Um, so, and it's, it's, it's the ball that you kind of want to avoid, right? Like you don't really want to um, mess around with the eight ball when you're playing pool. It's like a bad thing, something you want to avoid. So, um, so when you say you're behind the eight ball, it means that yeah, you hit the eight ball last, Victor, right. It means that you're in trouble, right? So if you are behind the eight ball, <laughs> it means you're in trouble. <laughs> okay, why, why they said eight? Uh... Why yeah, not choose, choose another number? Oh, because in, in pool, that's a good question. Okay, in pool, <laughs> the, rules, the rules are that, that you, you try to get the, the eight ball in the pocket last. So, the... In pool, the rules are that you try to get the eight ball in the pocket last. So if if for some reason you allow the situation that y your only move is to hit the eight ball and it's not the last ball on the table, then you're in great danger of of putting the eight ball in the pocket before it should go. So if that happens, you lose. <laughs> so it's, yeah. So if you're behind the eight ball, yeah, it means that, yes, that you're, you're in trouble, that you're probably going to lose. <laughs> yeah, it's a suicide when you get it by mistake. That's right. <laughs> yeah, only players understand, so that's true. Um, but you don't have to play pool to understand the saying behind the eight ball, it means that you're in a difficult situation. So, okay, uh, uh, excuse yes. me. In which, in which, in which game uh, this eight ball, in which game? It's called pool, we call it. Um, and here, I, um, if you didn't see the link before, um, here's a picture of it, in case you're not sure. <laughs> you might call it billiards. This is a pool from, uh, like, football? No, 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 it's a, it's a table game. You, like, you play it in a bar, usually. You play in a bar, usually. Or a club. Can, can you see the picture? No, where is it? I, uh, cl I put it here in the chat, in the chat box. You can click on it. This Hangout chat? Yeah, uh huh. Where it says Colingo? Yeah. I'm feeling Colingo. Uh huh. Okay. Click on Colingo, and then you'll see I put the chat. I'm um, sorry, the the link in there, and you can see what we're talking about. <laughs> so, here's an example of. Uh, you can say this. Um, he is behind the eight. He's behind the... Okay, yes, and also on sports TV. You're right, Mo, you're right. I forgot about that. Yes, it's on TV a lot. He is behind the eight ball because he um, forgot his wife's birthday. 
<laughs> this is a billiard, billiard game. Yeah, billiard, yes. Uh -huh, billiards, yes. We call it pool here. I don't know why, um, but yes. So the rules are that, that the, the last... Yeah. I, I don't know the rules of... Uh, yeah, me, I don't either, really. I don't play either, but um, you could say, here's an example. He is behind the eight ball because he forgot his wife's birthday. <laughs> so if you forget your wife's birthday, you're probably in a lot of trouble, right? <laughs> yeah. So we would say you're behind the eight ball. It means that, um, it means that you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this uh, with a uh, with wife. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can use this with anybody. This is a very common phrase. It no, just no, means. Tell me that's that's about the wife. I like it. Oh, he is behind the eight ball because he forgot his wife's birthday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it means he's he's dangerous. He's in trouble. Yeah, in yeah. Trouble. and yeah, you trouble. can see. I'm also. Is this who? Who is it speaking to me? Is it Roberto? Who's speaking? It's Raji. Oh, Raji. Yeah, I'm. It's. I'm. I'm. I'm writing it down also in the chat so you can see it too. Very good. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, so all of these idioms from today are are idioms that have to do with sports of some kind. So. Um, Certain things are, um, you are behind the eight ball if you don't pay bills by tomorrow. Very good. Okay, that would work too. <laughs> right. You can say that. So anytime you're in a difficult position, we say you're behind the eight ball. You know, when it's dangerous, either dangerous because you might get hurt physically or dangerous because somebody might become angry with you you can use this expression, right? Like, here's an example. Like, um, if I did not come to class, I uh, would be behind the eight ball with Colingo, <laughs> right? Like, if I didn't come to class, um, I would be behind the eight ball with Colingo. That means, oh, sorry, Colingo, Lingo, sorry. Um, because, you know, I'm, they're paying me to come and teach the class. So if I don't show up, if I don't arrive to class, I will be in trouble, right? I will be behind the eight ball. <laughs> okay, does it make sense? Does everybody understand? So now I've gone through quite a few of these already. So it might be time to maybe practice a little bit. Um, we, we don't have to go through all of these. It's a lot. There's a many here. So maybe it would be better to um, just to sort of practice the ones that we have done today, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we can practice a ballpark figure. So let me say that again. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Um, I'm sorry. Let me... Okay. Um, so a ballpark figure just means an estimate, right? So uh, we could say um, the president... Gave a ballpark estimate for the rate of inflation in Cuba. I don't know, something like this. Okay, so here's an example. The president gave a ballpark estimate for the rate of inflation in Cuba. So it just means that he, he, he gave a general estimate, not necessarily, not precise, right? Not perfect, but an estimate that's general. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
<laughs> Everybody else okay? I see. I, I've heard yeah. from Victor Urbano. Are you okay? Roberto, are you okay? I've heard from Alejandro Kazuo. Yeah. Are you okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. So, what what would you prefer? Do you I do you want to try to speak a little bit and practice some of these, or would you prefer that I provide more examples? Well, we need to practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who will be brave and practice? <laughs> you can type it if you want to. Yep. <laughs> Okay, let me try to give uh, another example. Um, let's see the let's see um, our um, our chief officer could only give a ballpark estimate about profits. Okay. Our chief officer could only give a ballpark estimate about profits for this quarter. So it just means that he uh, couldn't give a perfect quote or a perfect estimate. It was close in the ballpark, in the general area, right, but not perfect. Okay? Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe one of, somebody can try to give an example of how they might use one of these expressions. Oh, here we go. Mo, thank you. She gave me a ballpark figure of the fees of the house's reparations. Good. I think we would say repairs, Mo, but very good. Very good. She gave me a ballpark figure of the fees of the house's repairs. Very good. That means that it's it's close, but it might be a little bit more in cost, or the cost might be a little bit less. It's not perfect. Very good. Okay. How about it doesn't well you can pick whichever whichever idiom you like to try to use. I hear typing. This is good. <laughs> so let me just ask Mo, are are you in the class? I don't think so. Or watching. Oh, watching. Okay. Very good. Very good. Your examples are very good. And same with Victor, too. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> There's Mo. Okay. Oh, yeah, we have two of them. <laughs> okay. Very good. Okay. So I, I want to make sure that, um, that when you leave this class, 
you you have an idea of at least some of the idioms because there are so many of these in English it's it's not possible to to learn all of them in at, at once so I think it's better to practice two or three of them so that you get them in your head So even if you don't want to speak, you can try to write something, and then I can help you. Okay. Good. <laughs> If, if you each of you try to type something you will learn so much more so it's worthwhile to try <laughs> even if there are many mistakes it, it's okay we will help you Good. You are behind the eight ball because you didn't do your homework. Perfect. Roberto. Oh my gosh. Bravo. Very good. <laughs> yes, you definitely are behind the eight ball. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Okay. So when when you try as a student, when you actually use these expressions yourself, you will remember them. Ballpark estimate of the pitch is 50,000. Good. Okay, that'll work. And then, Mo, don't forget to say like dollars, right? $50,000 or euros. Make sure you add some sort of unit. Very good. Okay, very good. Inside class is better than outside across the board. Very good, Victor. Ha ha. ha L O L O L O L. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> um, maybe you're right, Victor. But you, very good. Very good. Bravo. <laughs> I make over two hundred thousand dollars, and I don't know exactly how much my brother makes, but I guess it's in the same ballpark. Excellent. Very good, Alejandro. Very good. Hello, yo. Welcome. We are doing sports. Sports idioms. Uh, let me here. The link is here somewhere. Let me find it. <laughs> here it is. Uh, let me give it to you. Okay. Here's the document that we're doing. Very good. Okay. All right. So now, very good. At least we practiced something, and that's that's very good. So let me let's move on. I'll give you maybe one more. Uh, to get off on the wrong foot. Okay. Get off on the wrong foot. Get off Okay. This 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 expression uh, uh, excuse, comes Yes. Excuse me. Sure. Uh in uh, this uh LG, L Alejandro, in Alejandro example, which is written in the chat. Uh, yes, uh huh, Alejandro, uh huh. What is, what, is, what is the expression you mentioned? Oh, in the same ballpark. In he's using the the expression ballpark. He's ballpark. saying in the ballpark. Uh huh. He added a word, which you can do that too. He added the word same, but the expression is in the ballpark. Uh huh. He said he wrote in. The same ballpark. Yes, I got it. Yes, uh huh. But it's the same expression. Yes. 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 Mm hmm Yes, Alejandro. His English is quite good. Obviously, he he's able to manipulate. <laughs> ballpark. Yes, Rossi. Ballpark is one of the first expressions that we went over. It's on the it's on this document, and you can. I got it. Okay. Yes, and we can look at the chat too. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Ballpark. Very good. Okay. So far, so good. Oh, excuse, but many times I need to revise my grammar. Alejandro, no problem. You're doing great, really. 
You are doing just fine. This is beginner, right? <laughs> you were doing just fine, Alejandro. This is a beginner class, right? We don't, it, it's, you know, you're doing just fine, really. <laughs> okay. So please don't be, I don't want you to, to think that, um, how can I say this? I am a teacher, not a judge, right? Not a judge, <laughs> right? <laughs> My job is to help you, not to um, not to judge you, right? <laughs> so, so whatever mistakes you may or may not make, it, it's fine, okay? It's fine because we 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 have all tried to learn another language, and it's extremely difficult. So, very good, okay. Um, okay, so I wanted to go over this one. Get off on the wrong foot. This this expression comes from running, the wrong foot. Comes from, um, well, we call this, in English, we call it track and field, we call it, this sport. Let me see if I can find a picture. <laughs> track and field, let's see here. Uh, And I know you all have this. Uh, let's see here. Like this. Here we go. Here's a picture of something that sort of about track and field, right? You can click on this and see the picture. The picture will help you understand, I think. Track and field, we call this. We, you might call it running or racing. We call it... Can everybody see the picture? Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay, so to get off on the wrong foot, um, um, no, I it think means... I have an example. Okay, let's um, hear. You get off on the wrong foot in your first day. Yes, usually, yes. Okay, very good. It... It, it has to do with um, the, a relationship that you are starting with somebody new. So um, it always has to do with relationships. Yes, yeah, so that would be a good one. You get off on the wrong foot on your first date. Yes. <laughs> right. And usually, very good. These are good examples. So, um, you, here's an example you might tell someone. Um, I think we got off on the wrong foot. I am sorry if I said the wrong things. If I said something bad. Let's Um, start again. Okay. So, the examples that you gave me there, um, Kazuo, that's perfect. The new manager got off on the wrong foot, don't you think? Yes, that's perfect. You get off on the wrong foot in a date, very good. You start against the rules in the sport, y yes. Or you get off to a very bad start. Rusty, or you get off to a bad start of the race. Yes. Because <laughs> when, when you are racing, the, the start is very important, right? If you don't start the race perfectly, it's very difficult to, to win. So you have to make sure that your feet are in the right place and that you that you start running the right way so if you get off on the wrong foot <laughs> it's terrible it means that you will lose Katie in my example should I use get off or got off either either one um, got off for you I think um, Kazuo because it was past tense Getting on the wrong foot will make you fa fail early. Yes, Mo, that's correct. You're correct. You are correct, Mo. 
So this is an expression that we use. So you might say, um, I met his mom yesterday, but I think we got off on the wrong foot. Okay, here's an example. I met his mom yesterday, but I think we got off on the wrong foot. She did not talk to me the whole day, <laughs> right? So something happened, and they are not, they're not getting along. <laughs> okay, good. Does anybody else want to try? Good, I made a bad start. That's exactly what it means, Rusty. Very good. To make a bad start. Yes. <laughs> With the exception of Mr. Smith, had no chance of striking gold in track and field. Okay. Yeah. That's a good English sentence. But I don't see I don't see an idiom in there though. Oh, maybe are you using the idiom striking gold? Uh is that the idiom you're using? It's a little. Um, this is an idiom, but it's it's not. Ah um, uh, yeah it, yeah. It's not a it's not a sports one. <laughs> this idiom is yeah. <laughs> good job. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so let me ask you: Have any of you ever like? got off on the wrong foot when you with somebody <laughs> like maybe a teacher or your mother-in-law or <laughs> yeah I think it happens to everybody right this happens across the board <laughs> we can say across the board everybody has this experience right <laughs> We all of us get off on the wrong foot. I'm sorry, get off on the wrong foot with somebody, right? Yes, like at the first day at a job. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sometimes you just sometimes you meet people and you just don't get along, right? You just don't like them. It's just this happens <laughs> for whatever reasons, right? So, um, it does happen across the board that we all get off on the wrong foot. <laughs> yes, to get cross or angry. Very good. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Um I here's an uh, now I'll try I'll try to combine some for you. I think I got off on the Okay, <laughs> here's an example. <laughs> I put some a bunch of them together for you. Okay, so I think I got off on the wrong foot at my new job when I told them I did not have an idea about sales. I could not even give them a ballpark estimate. I am behind the eight ball already. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and this this is quite informal, right? This is informal writing informal speaking speaking and writing um, <laughs> um, you 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 probably would not write these things like for academic English right this is not academic English this is just regular English 
<laughs> so there's an example of the of some of the idioms that we went over today. So um, I got off on the wrong foot at my new job when I told them I did not have an idea about sales. I could not even give them a ballpark estimate. I am behind the eight ball already. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> Right? And I'm sure something like this has happened to all of us, right? <laughs> you know, you, you try to, to do a good thing, but it doesn't work out, right? <laughs> all right, let's see. What other ones did I give? Um, oh, yeah. Yesterday I saw a comedy, Two and a Half Men. This is a comedy with no holds barred. Yes, that works, Alejandro. Very good. No holds barred. Let me just explain what this one is. Yeah, you'll be adding a bow to your failures. You're right. Um, um, no holds barred. This is another idiom. This comes from wrestling. Wrestling. Let me see if I can find a picture for that. Picture of wrestling. Let me see here. Wrestling. Wrestling is very popular here. Uh, like this. Okay. okay. Here's a picture. In case you're not sure what wrestling is, here's here's a picture. Right. <laughs> so in wrestling, um, there are certain things you can't do. Right. You can't. There's certain ways that you cannot hold your opponent. Yeah, in wrestling, there are rules about how you can hold your opponent, right? So um, in wrestling, there are rules about how you can hold your opponent. You can't just do anything you want to. Like, you can't, like, just grab their head and force them down or, you know, you, there's rules. But if you... If you say no holds are barred, that means that you could do anything. So there is a sport, what's it called? Like um, uh, universal, uh, what is that sport? Hmm. Kickboxing or something. You, oh, mixed martial arts, that's what it's called. We call it mixed martial arts. Yes, you can't grab their hair. Yeah, um, mixed martial arts I don't know this is now this mixed martial arts this is really popular here in the US let me see if I can find a picture mixed martial arts in mixed martial arts they could do anything they want I think right <laughs> um, see if I can mm, let's see here mixed martial arts here's the here's the website for it I don't I don't really know that much about it but in this in um yeah in mixed martial arts yeah it's like cage combat or everything is legal you're right exactly um you can do anything you want you can kick hit throw them down grab their hair you could do anything so MMA mixed martial arts I should put mixed they call it yeah. Martial arts is no hold holds barred. It means you can do anything. There's no holds barred. It means you can do anything you want. <laughs> right? So that's what no hold barred means. You can do anything. So if you could say um, my parents had a no holds barred approach to raising me here's an example my parents had a no holds barred approach to raising me which means that when I was a little kid I could do anything I wanted <laughs> right there was no discipline <laughs> 
There was no no discipline or punishment. <laughs> I just could do whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, barred. Oh, barred means um, illegal. Bard means illegal. Uh huh. Okay. Do these kind of make sense? <laughs> we we use these a lot uh, in the when when we speak often. <laughs> That's right. Barred means forbidden. Good. That's an illegal or forbidden or against the rules. Any of those ways of thinking about the word barred is correct. That's good. Okay, so let me, um, in case some of you don't know, let me just tell you about this. Um, there is a, a Facebook page for this. Um, there's a Facebook page for this company, and it can be useful if, you, if you're not already a member. Um, if you're not already a member to join because uh, they give all kinds of different information and so forth. Okay, so um, you earlier in the chat I gave the link to the to the document and um, I guess next time I go through this I will finish the sports idioms because um, there's a many 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 of them and um, it's you can you can go um, Okay, thank you, Mo. <laughs> yeah, and um, if you if you have time, you can go to Facebook and you can like post your comments about the class, um, because I always have a link there. If you like, you can. You don't have to. It's um, I I think Colingo will send you an emails about about things, so um, it doesn't really matter. But if you have time, okay, everybody. So um. The next time I teach is um, a Wednesday, I think.